name is uh, Donica, uh, Donica Kelly. Uh, I'm with uh, the Diatech Group. So Diatech are uh, an Autodesk uh, reseller, but uh, more than that, we're actually a consultancy for uh, BIM and AEC uh, industries. My background is as a land surveyor and a trainer in tech support for various different uh, geospatial instruments and software. And I came into this space uh, with my background in 3D laser scanning and photogrammetry. So uh, today is a talk on automating digital technologies, less of the automating, but we'll get to that at the end, uh, for monitoring site progress on BIM and projects. So typically, you'll have uh, a model and you'll have a site and they need to be connected in some shape or form and you need to be able to monitor them. So uh, my take on this is, they're not spreading out. So you need to uh, verify site conditions. You need to make sure that they actually match uh, what the design is. So if somebody's moved a wall, somebody's moved pipes, uh, you, need to, you need to know that, you need to know it fairly quickly. So you need to be able to quantify those and assign them out to uh, stakeholders on site, either construction teams or uh, contractors or design teams to redesign certain elements within the, uh, within the model. You need to be able to clearly communicate that with stakeholders and uh, get sign off on that. You need to be able to track that change management as well. So some of this might be a little bit old hat, but just going over a little bit of a little bit of road to cover this. So various methods of, uh, of verifying uh, site conditions, the old way tapes, distos or uh, as-built surveys with a total station or uh, an electronic theodolite. Newer versions uh, of the technologies are 3D laser scanning, so you've probably seen some of the technology outside. Uh, every manufacturer actually has one at the moment, and they have uh, different types of software which actually allow you to quantify model versus site conditions. Uh, another way, uh, a less expensive way, will be photography. So you can use uh, 3D, um, sorry, uh, panoramic imagery for conditional site surveys over time. So you've got different platforms which will allow you to incrementally check where change has taken place uh, or make sure that installations have gone ahead. So certain door types have been inserted. And then uh, an old technology which has come back into the fore, which I quite like, is uh, photogrammetry. So you can build point clouds for photogrammetry from low res up to high res uh, camera types, uh, either handheld, fixed, or through a particular type of platform. You can use these uh, once there's a certain overlap within the imagery to produce point clouds without uh, overly expensive uh, pieces of equipment that you'd be afraid to take on site in some cases. So you quantify those issues uh, typically through CAD, which is points and lines. Uh, visually, ordinarily, you don't do clash detection or anything like that, or a topo overlay. So you'd you'd have your your survey. Uh, you'd overlay it uh, on your design and you see where changes have gone. So it's kind of a manual process. And uh, it's the same with the uh, CAD and BIM models. You can analyze the scan data against your CAD or uh, 3D models. And then there's also uh, online resources which will allow you to share that data out uh, up to and above clash detection, which will clash site conditions against, uh, against models, which then you can raise issues and assign those out. So the way that stakeholders had these uh, sort of things communicated to them in the past is through email and memo. It's still quite a lot in that way. So if somebody receives a PDF or a document and it gets left in an inbox or not read or accidentally in junk. And if it doesn't get uh, actioned, it's not noticed until it's too late. Some systems use file sharing. Uh, file sharing is pretty good. You can see if somebody's read it, you can track if somebody's read it or if they've uh, altered a document or done anything with it. But these are all manual processes. And in other platforms, such as uh, BIM360, as an example, will allow you to track, uh, will allow you to assign an issue to track if somebody's actually actioned it and if they've completed it. So you can go through uh, traffic light systems if you've got uh, read, actioned, and completed, and you can sign off on those. And the change management tracking is to, you can verify the action lists are completed. You can monitor uh, if actions are still active, and if they are, you can adjust time frames or delivery, you can hold back on certain aspects of construction and uh, then you can complete these lists prior to project handover when somebody might be surprised to find uh, a heating room on the other side of a car park underground or anything like that. So, as an example, yeah, this worked earlier on. <laughs> um, should be, yeah. So, uh, as an example of this, I uh, created 
a Lego model in Revit. And the process that I chose to do was <coughs> take uh, photographs of it. So rather than using a 3D scanner, you can take site photographs of your model. So uh, build a model, you uh, run it through your recap, for, as an example, or other photogrammetric software. You produce your 3D model. You might think it looks a little bit moldy there. That's taken handheld with my telephone, built up a 3D model against it and uh, you then clash detect it. So you can see the cloud there as a series of blue dots against, clashed against uh, a 3D model, the, the Revit model, which was uh, Lego scale, which is quite difficult to work with, but anyway. You, uh, you then get your clash report for any errors or mistakes, and you can give those out to uh, stakeholders. So you can assign them, get them fixed, and uh, send it out again. So, the site design versus survey, uh, or site, site versus design, with a system such as photography or 3D scanning, it's near real time. So you can use any number of different plugins for Revit or for your BIM 360. You take, it used to be, if you take uh, 3D scanning as an example, you would spend a day scanning, you'd spend two or three days processing that data, and then you would feed it out to the client who then would be able to read the data because it's tens of gigabytes in size. Whereas these processes, uh, bring down file sizes, allow people to use uh, and read the data on their tablets through, for example, the BIM360 platform, and uh, they can then assess uh, reports. So you can create reports quicker, you can produce, you can do a survey in a morning and have the reports and answers in an afternoon. Everybody can read the data, so you can open up the data on your tablets, telephones, PC, laptops on site, and actions are live and accountable. So you can deliver, uh, you can deliver a full 3D survey in very little time and uh, users are able to action problems within a day as opposed to a couple of days when you're using very large uh, data which ordinarily has to be nearly hand delivered because the data is so large you bring it on hard drive instead of just emailing it across or possibly using uh, online platforms. So. The options there, you can use apps within the BIM 360 platform, which will allow you to share data and use your actions. Another option uh, is to use 360 degree panoramic imagery, uh, shared out through similar platforms again. Uh, you can auto classify point clouds now with uh, these plugins. So you can use, as an example, point views, which will sit into the BIM 360 platform. It'll auto classify and mesh. So you can actually clash surfaces against surfaces uh, and see if walls will be moved by how much you quantify that and see what needs to be done in order to rectify it. And then uh, you can produce, as I say, photogrammetric, photogrammetric meshes uh, from this, which is a very light version of uh, ScanCloud data and makes the data almost uh, uh, democratised for any other reason or users out there. So I did say it was uh, the automating of the technology, but that's what kind of comes next. So, I mean, you can use any number of types of cameras from handheld phone, that's a, a small 360 camera to higher resolution security cameras that are in fixed positions, you can walk around sites, uh, you don't necessarily have to bring a heavy tripod and lots of expensive kit with you. Uh, you can use your photometric meshes from these, from these cameras, uh, you can produce your 3D real models, uh, real, real time models in using recap uh, photo. You can automate the process, that's the next stage uh, in the automating it, so you would use something like Dynamo which will give you a maximum min, um, maximum min of the point load and you can produce a, a block if you want to do just a, a mass model as you mentioned earlier on. Uh, you can clash that against the model, you can see how a project is progressing. Uh, it depends on the type of camera actually that you use, if you just want to see uh, a mass model, very simple uh, growth of the project over time, or you can use high resolution cameras which will give you down to the rebar that was installed that previous morning, so you can check that as well. And then the efficient sharing of data comes out of uh, the BIM360 platform, which anybody can have access to, so long as they're actually invited into the project themselves. So, I think I may have raced through that a little bit. Uh, any questions on any of that?